Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And basically, you know, continuation of the previous video. So, the fourth example now. The fourth example is again, uh, you know, somewhat uh, related to the previous one. But let's see, we do it. 2 plus sine omega naught t. Uh, wait, 2 plus sine omega naught t plus 2 cos omega naught t and plus cos of 2 omega naught t plus pi by 4 plus 2 cos of uh, no this is a cos of this is a cos of 2 omega naught t plus pi by 4 so this is a phase shift now again we are asked to find the Fourier series representation and the Fourier coefficients also the you could say a further question is to find the magnitude and the phase spectrum as well. So let's get started then. Let's get started. So first of all, first of all, we need to get rid of this particular thing, the phase shift that we got. So we we have a formula. We have a formula that cos of uh, a plus b is equal to cos of a into cos of b, and I believe it's a minus sine of a sine of b. The minus sine of a sine of b yes it is like this so what do you do with this is cos of 2 omega naught t and you take sine of pi by 4 so that would be uh, 1 upon another root 2 so wait a minute what would be this we, we have it like this cos of 2 omega naught t plus pi by 4 so I would remove this and now what do you have cos of a plus b so cos of a which means cos of 2 omega naught t and then you have cos of b pi by 4 so this is 1 upon under the root 2 so you have 1 upon under the root 2 fine now you have a negative sine of a so sine of a means sine of sine of 2 omega naught t and then you have sine of b sine of pi by 4 is again the same thing that is 1 upon under the root 2 so this is what we have got now coming back to our thing so we break this again into your exponential terms so through Euler's theorem again okay so x of t is 2 plus for sine we have an exponential of uh, j omega naught t uh, minus exponential of minus j omega naught t upon 2j so I, I, I directly you know split it up 1 upon 2j if you could see from here as well or let it go let it go you know the, the basic thing is the Euler's theorem it's it's you know getting us a very important is this the Euler's theorem that is I don't think this is the Euler's theorem that I'm talking again and again Euler's theorem is something sine of uh, exponential of j theta is equal to cos of theta plus j sine of theta that is the Euler's theorem I believe and this is the same thing so while well, I'm getting a little confused let it go let it go whatever it is okay coming to this so now you have cos of 2 omega naught t but first you have a, a, a 1 a 1 upon 2 outside and then in the brackets you have cos of 2 omega naught t so this would be an exponential of j2 omega naught t plus exponential of uh, minus j2 omega naught t and this is whole divided by 2 so so I would give this a 1 over 2 over here and I would give this a 1 over 2 over here and this 1 over root 2 I would also give it so this would be 1 over 2 root 2 1 over 2 root 2 fine so we're done with the second as well then we have a negative negative 1 over under the root 2 is outside sine of 2 omega naught t would be an exponential of j uh, j2 omega naught t right and then you have a negative exponential of j2 omega naught t over here with the negative sign both are divided by 2j so if I have this negative over here this would become positive this would become 1 upon 2j into root 2 this would become a negative 1 upon 2j into root 2 this is what we have got okay so now what would be the next step and before getting in the next step I am wondering that I have a mistake this is 2 for sine omega naught t I have these two for and this thing I have missed 2 cos of omega naught t I have missed because this is for this this is for this so let me get the 2 omega naught t as well 
so you have a 2 for cos you have an exponential of j omega naught t uh, a, a plus exponential of negative j omega naught t whole divided by 2 so so this is you know uh, if this is multiplied with this you will get it again you will get this because you have the two outside you have the two dividing with dividing with both now you do what now you uh, you know you take common so 2 comes first exponential of j omega naught t would be this one exponential of j omega naught t the common things that you get is 1 plus 1 over 2j this is what it is fine then you have what uh, exponential of j omega naught t is done you have an exponential of negative j omega naught t negative j omega naught t so the common thing in this is 1 minus 1 upon 2j then you have an exponential of j2 omega naught t so plus exponential of j2 omega naught t and exponential of j2 omega naught t is this uh, this and this also oh, i take the positive first 1 upon 2 root 2 minus 1 upon uh, 2j root 2 this is the exponential of j2 omega naught t. Then you have a plus exponential of uh, negative j2 omega naught t. And for that you have a 1 upon 2 j root 2 is positive. And over here again uh, 1 upon 2 root 2. Plus 1 upon 2 root 2. And let me check have I made any mistake. 1 plus 1 over 2j, 1 minus 1 over 2j. 1 upon 2 root 2 minus 1 over 2j yes 1 upon 2 root 2 plus so yes this is absolutely perfect this is what this is the Fourier series representation of this particular example and similarly over here you could uh, you could multiply this 2 with an exponential of j omega is 0 uh, j, uh, and, uh, and k and t and whatever it is k is 0 right k is 0. Fine. So, now what do you have? You again have to draw the magnitude in the phase spectrum of this. So, what do I get is, you write the, the, the k term, a k, you write its value, you write the magnitude of a k, you write the phase of a k. If you check for the values, this is for k equal to 0, this would give me the DC component a naught. This is for j omega naught, this is giving me a uh, j omega naught means this is for k equal to 1 this is a 1 we have a negative j omega naught this is a negative 1 similarly over here you have a 2 you have a negative 2 and that's it a naught a 1 a negative 1 a 2 a negative 2 the values are what the values for a naught is 2 the value of this is 1 plus 1 upon 2j uh, 1 minus 1 upon 2j uh, 1 over 2 root 2 minus 1 upon j2 root 2 and over there what is it 1 upon 2 root 2 and what plus 1 upon j2 root 2 so this is what we have fine now uh, let me shift it a little over here so you have now the magnitude of ak you have the phase of ak how do you write the magnitude so you know it how to write it the magnitude is of any complex number is you know uh, I, I would write it somewhere over here like over here the magnitude of uh, any any real number is you know of any complex number c is the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared and this is under the root and similarly for the angle you have a uh, theta is tangent inverse of the imaginary part divided by the real part and this if you do it like this so i have written down the values for myself is 2 1.12 2 1.12 2 1.12 1.12 for this one and then you have a 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 you have a 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 .5. similarly the the angles are 0 degrees 26.5 degrees negative 26.5 degrees 40, negative 45 degrees and a positive 45 degrees so this is what it is now if you're asked to draw the phase spectrum the magnitude spectrum you could do it what however you want it 
so let me do it for you this is if my k axis this is my a k axis so what do you have k equal to zero you have two this is two or let me you know a little make it longer if this is two at zero at one you have the 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 magnitude is one one point one two so this would be somewhere over here at negative one you have the same thing this is 1.12 similarly then you have at two you have it 0.5 at two you have it 0.5 and similarly at negative two also you have it 0.5 at negative three it's zero at positive three it's zero and so on again have a look the property that we saw in the previous video the magnitude spectrum the magnitude spectrum is an even function of k you time reverse it you get the same thing back isn't it fine it should be now now what do i have this is my k axis now i have the, the the phase of k so the phase at zero is zero at one is 26.5 at one is let's say this is some value 26.5 at negative one is uh, negative 26.5 at two is negative 45 At a negative 2 is positive 45. And at 3, 0, at 4, 0, and this and that. So have a look again, have a look again. We saw the previous video that a, the, the phase spectrum is an odd function of time. You time reverse it, you get the negative values. That's it. That's it for this particular question. Now we can have another sort of a question. And you know, let me remove the board first. okay the next question is what you are given a consider a periodic signal you are this is question number five we are given a periodic signal we know we, well, let me write it we are given a periodic signal with the fundamental time period is equal to eight second millisecond the unit let it go Fourier coefficients are given a2 is 2 A negative 2 is 2, A3 is 8J, A negative 3 is negative 8J. These are my Fourier coefficients. And what do we have? We are asked about X of T. This data is given and you are asked about the X of T, which means the things that we have been discussing till now, this is something opposite to that. So, in this sort of question, what do you have is you need to know the fundamental frequency first. The fundamental frequency is something of very, very importance. So, omega naught is unknown. Why? Because I would be finding it from the synthesis equation, you know. I would be getting my x of t in this particular form. The summation k running from negative infinity to positive a k exponential of jk omega naught t now i have my a case i would give him value of k i don't know you know this if this is a negative 2 this is for k equal to negative 2 i know this i know this but i don't know omega naught so omega naught is something of my concern i need to find omega naught first the fundamental frequency is something fundamental so how do i find it I find it from the given data, you know, given is t is equal to 8, t is equal to 8, so simply it implies that omega naught is 2 pi upon 8, and this implies that my omega naught is pi by 4 radian per second or whatever it is, I'm not interested in the units. Fine. So, now I could write x of t as the summation of that, so I write my x of t in the Fourier series form first. So A2, so A2 means if this is A2, this would be an exponential of J2 omega naught T, fine. Then you have A negative 2, so you have a plus A of minus 2 exponential of negative J2 omega naught T. Then you have A3, so plus A3 exponential of J3 omega naught T. And then you have finally an A of minus 3 exponential of negative J3 omega naught T. This is what I have. 
This is what I was talking about. I have all the information, but I don't have the value of omega naught, and I've already found that as well. So now I put it back over here. So x of t would be a value of a2 is 2 exponential of j2 pi by 4t plus a negative 2 is 2 again exponential of negative j2 pi by 4t a3 is an 8j 8j exponential of j3 pi by 4t and then you have a minus 8j exponential of uh, negative j3 pi by 4t is this clear till here it should be fine now what do you have is you take the terms common you take the terms common whatever cancels out cancels out this would be pi by 2 this would be pi by 2 uh, so what do I have to take common no nothing 2 2 I can take common from here so my x of t would be what my x of t would be 2 is common in this particular thing so if I write it as an exponential of j pi by 2 t plus exponential of negative j pi by 2 t fine then I can take an 8 j common from here you have an 8 j exponential of j 3 pi by 4 t minus exponential of negative j 3 pi by 4 t if you have a look if you have a look so this is something relating to the cause function exponential of j omega naught t plus exponential of negative j omega naught t where omega naught is in this particular case pi by 2 but the whole we have to divide it by 2 so this if i divide it by 2 and also multiply it by 2 so this thing would become a cause function Similarly, an exponential of j omega naught t minus exponential of minus j omega naught t, but you have to divide it by 2j in order to get the sine function. So I divide and multiply it with a 2j to get to my sine function. So which means that finally, finally, my x of t would come out to be 2, uh, 2, 2 are 4 cos of pi by 2t plus 8j multiplied with 2j so this would give you 16j squared and j squared is 1 so negative 16 sine of 3 pi by 4t and this is my answer so I have got my x of t from the given Fourier coefficient at its time period previously what we did was the repetition the reverse of this we were given x of t we used to go in this particular steps to get my a k in this way we got the opposite we, we were given a k we got into the opposite steps we got our x of t that's it i finish this video over here i see in the next video maybe with some more examples or maybe the properties of examples on the properties so I don't know whatever the topic is till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.